All right, this is QB Cast number 38. Welcome to the Apostles' Corner. We've got a special guest today, Tom Ledbetter with Kingdom Gravity. Yeah. This is a Frontier Harvest Ministries production. And hey, man, I'm your host today. Nice to be alive in Jesus. It's nice to be breathing his life and doing the things that he's called us to do. Amen. Hey, I got my uh, faithful co-host with me. Hi there, everybody. I'm your co-host, Jared Lenhart. Good to be back on the show this week. And uh, we got another special guest on our show today, and it's another friend. You know, last week we had Scott on the show and on our QV Cast 37, and it, we talked about friendship. You know, people that you meet, you haven't seen for a long time, but when you get together... You, you just start off where you were. You and flow. You flow together in the same jive. And you and that's real friendship there. And I just want to introduce Brother Tom Ledbetter. Amen. Good to have you on the show, brother. Good, good to, to have to be you here. in the house. Yeah, man. And before we get started, we're going to have Tom say a prayer for uh, different missionaries out on the field, people out there doing the work. We just want to put them in prayer and people we've known that have gone to China and other places. So we'll put them before the Lord here. Absolutely. Amen. Well, Father, we just we thank you that it is your heart to send laborers into the nations, that yes. you are the desire of the nations. And even today, Lord, that your fire would just come upon laborers. You said that the harvest is plentiful, the laborers are few. So pray that you that laborers would be sent, yes. Lord, laborers that would be refreshed and renewed with clarity, with vision, with hope and with purpose. And with great provision, Lord, we just pray for the provision uh, of the Lord, uh, for the work of the Lord into every nation, Lord, in the earth, that the great commission, Lord, would go forth in power with souls saved, healed, delivered, set free, equipped and trained and sent out in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I, I think I met Tom. Man, it's been like, what, 20 years ago or something? I don't know. Has it been that long? I met him down in uh, Rockwall, Texas many mm -hmm. years ago, and uh, it was great to meet young people like Tom at the time that were thinking, thinking bigger, thinking prophetic, thinking body ministry. And uh, it's so great to have you here, brother, uh, in our show today. And uh, I took, a, a, I got some pictures of your family here, Tom, Lily, and Nathan's your son's name. Huh? How, yes, sir. How old's Nathan? Nathan just turned eight. Wow. Eight years wow. old. Wow. Yeah, man. And uh, Tom, he serves a ministry called uh, Kingdom Gravity. And Kingdom Gravity, it's a, a 501c3 nonprofit organization, and it was birthed out of an an encounter in the foothills of the Himalayan mountains in western China. Tom's heart is to see God's kingdom come now on the earth as it is in heaven, and for sons and daughters to discover their identity and step into their destiny. Why don't you just talk a little about a little bit about that to us, man, about sons and daughters coming into their destiny. Yeah, well, I, I think a lot of what we do is 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 to tell what we do is to tell the story how it came into, um, you know, into into purpose. You know, it was, um, you know, I could say that that the Lord told us that we were I was going to be going to Africa, um, you know, early on and and before I'd met Chuck and and then I, I remember Chuck, you and I met at at Soul Man's Barbecue. Oh, yeah. I remember there was a, a, a guy by the name of Ken Massey. He was a, a, a connector and he yeah, said, Hey, yeah. there's this guy that I, I really him. think you should meet. And uh, he's out of the box. And I, I was, you know, I like to think I was a pretty out of the box guy at the time too. And, <laughs> and uh, so, so Chuck had me at hello at barbecue at soul man's. And, um, and I remember you extending the invitation. Hey, I would love to have you come to China. And um, you know, uh, the, it worked out to go to China with you and, um, and man had this encounter in China where the Lord said, this is the ministry that I've given you, um, kingdom gravity ministries. And it was to, to bring the kingdom everywhere that we go, um, which is just to release the kingdom, to release the King, to be authentic and genuine and, uh, be real and to be transparent in the moment where God could do everything that he wanted to do. And, uh, and he could draw the hearts of every single person anywhere, anytime, anyone, 
And that was, that's a story, you know, that's the story that kind of connected us. It's the story of the encounter in China. Um, and so, uh, you know, we, we, we equip the body um, in, in many, many different ways uh, in all of the nations of the earth and here in America. And in a very unconventional way, we, 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 we want to be kingdom people. And just to be used at, at any point of time um, to touch people. And to make an impact. Be ready for action at all times. Yes. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's what I, uh, in China early on, it was difficult to disciple people. And so I developed this idea. Discipleship starts right now. Amen. And so what we would do is we would invite everyone that got born again on a trip. We'd invite them to our home and made sure that if they came out, they would be discipled. And I like that attitude, like anywhere, anytime, any now, let's get it going. Amen. Amen. I got some of the objectives from your website. And uh, the first one is to awaken hearts on the earth to behold and become the brightness. All three of them to release prophetic insight, understanding. Into higher perspectives. Number three, to raise up a generation that lives, moves, and has their being in the Father's heart. And uh, that seems to go around uh, uh, along with what you were saying there. Tell us a little bit about those objectives and how, how, how you're fulfilling those objectives and what type of groups that you're influenced for the Lord. Yeah, well, we have a, you know, a very central theme of, of our ministry has always been dreams and, you know, dreams okay. have, have, have always flowed, uh, led us to places that we would go to, led us to make decisions, all of our, um, you know, we, we like to, to say we're, we, you know, we're being awakened in our dreams. You know, there's a scripture that said when we came out of, um, Egypt, were we not like those that dreamed, yeah, and, you know, yeah. um, Egypt oftentimes is a place of bondage. And when we awaken and we come into the truth, we don't know we were asleep. And and so um, God just began to pour out dreams in our life. And, you know, I I had had these words from God that we were going to facilitate the move of his spirit in the earth. And I'm like, God, I don't know what that looks like. And he said, look at Joel 2 and Acts 2. He says, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. All your men will have dreams, visions, and they will prophesy. Yeah. And he said, this is the three ingredients of the moving of God's spirit. And this is the substance of awakening. When I awaken a people, they begin to dream. They begin to vision. They begin to have prophetic experiences, encounters with me. And so yeah. we were experiencing that. People we were coming in proximity were experiencing that. And to, to be very honest, it was messy. It was it was. Um, it was family. It was just like, you know, just God just showing us kind of as we go just to follow his leadership. And, wow. and um, it, it, it was a house. God just showed us what it looked like to live in that house of dreams where we're not only stewarding his voice for ourselves, but for others and for his promises and what he wanted to see in the earth. And so that we began to disciple people into that reality, like, um, you know, and we, we, we began to learn how do we look at scripture like through dreams, how do we frame um, what he's doing in our hearts, how he's making these things come alive? And, you know, it started with just, you know, very, very unintended. We didn't know. We had no clue what we were being brought into. It's like Paul in the book of, you know, the Corinthians, like we had received something we had no grid for. Yeah. And he was giving the grid through the revelation of Christ. And so we, um, you know, that was awakening. You know, and so we've experienced this awakening. We're seeing a people that are being awakened to that. And a lot of what came through that was strategy, intelligence. And so we, uh, Kingdom Gravity, we have, we have a, is a nonprofit, but we also have a for-profit that we established. And so through hearing God's voice, we find out that God is very intelligent and he has, he is the central intelligence agency. Amen. And so he gives us strategies. He gives us uh, intelligence. He gives us understanding to infiltrate and to empower and to do what he wants to do to establish his kingdom in the earth. And so that's, that's the very central theme of, of who we've become is to awaken a people and to have intelligence to see the great commission, the gospel go forth in every nation. Amen. That's, that's really important because like hearing God's voice, you know, people think when they have dreams, maybe they had funky pizza the other night before, or, you know, they don't think it's God speaking to them a lot of times, especially people in the church or the Christian community, you know, just, 
being able to hear God's voice and know that it's the Holy Spirit trying to, hey, hey, man, wake up. I'm trying to tell you something right now. And I remember, like, before I got into missions and I was just getting more and more hungry for the Lord, we went on a trip together. And, like, that's when God was really tugging at me. And you guys gave me a lot of good words. We were getting prayed for. Me and my buddy Isaac, you know, we were getting in our call. We were in high school trying to figure out what we wanted to do with our lives and what God wanted to do with us, you know. And I remember I would, when I was in high school, I'd have the same dream, like, every week. I, was, I would go into a building and I'd get into an elevator and go to the very top floor. And I was afraid of heights. You know, in my dream, I'd be all afraid, and the building would be moving. And I would go to the end of the edge of the building and look down, and it would just, and then boom, my dream would end. But I would have wow. that dream over and over again. You wow. know, it's like it's no coincidence that this dream's happening. You know, wow. God, what are you trying to tell me? And being able to get that and and that understanding from the Word wow. and from people like you guys to be able to teach us younger guys how oh this is God speaking to you. You know, this mm. is where this is the direction you need to go. You know, it ended up it ended ended up being like I need to get my roots deeper into the Lord. You know, when you go into a building, you, you got to dig deep before you build up, you know. So you got to, it was like God telling me, you got to get deep into me. You got to dig your roots into me. And uh, getting you ready for the harvest. Yeah, getting ready to send me out. It, and go. it seems like a lot of dreams nowadays is pertaining to the harvest. Yeah. Or equipping people or workers to get into the harvest where it needs to be harvested. Mm. Um, we had a situation, we were up in this Muslim province and there was very little breakthrough and uh these guys just didn't have any strategy they didn't know they had some churches but just were sort of lost and then one day they they uh a friend of mine invited these group of pastors down to where we were at in another location and uh when they walked in the door they were just sort of dumbfounded it was like weird they were just always looking at me strangely and they went through a whole week of this you know in our training center and like and finally at the end they said we got some we got some the some news to break to you could you come you know over here and so they they said hey we all all of us saw you in a dream with the same clothes on with the same guitar you're playing and the same deal and 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 this is what convinced us to come here and now god is telling you you have to come to us to show us how to do this yeah. and that was my i called that my macedonian call into wow. xinjiang yeah and now there's churches all through that area mm, but, god, man. but uh so speak to us a little bit about dreams and some key things that maybe some people mm -hmm. could learn on on a small interpretation of dreams. Yeah. So, you know, Jared's dream, I, I remember it's like when we went back to that moment, I remember first meeting you. I remember those dreams that you were having and I actually remember interpreting that dream. And, you know, when we talk about facilitating the direction of the Holy spirit, you know, he's very directive, um, you know, but we typically want to know, okay, we're very analytical, very linear thinking. I tell me to do this, tell me to do that. We're not machines. Um, but it's like when you're being elevated, you're being elevated by the Holy Spirit, right? You're being shifted into a higher perspective of thinking. And God God causes, you know, uh, a process that he puts us into to bring us into the higher perspective of thinking. Um, oftentimes looks like humility, which you're like, well, up is, you know, is it down or is it up? Well, in the kingdom, up is down, right? And, and he says, you know, and so you teach people the postures of how the Holy Spirit is leading and how he's really, he dreams really open up a, a, like a map for the heart of a person of, you know, most dreams are, are really to awaken the dreamer. And it's about God's supply to interpret the dream to that individual, what, what the, what the Holy Spirit is saying through the interpretation of the Bible. I think it's so important yeah. that we learn to frame um, the, 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 the interpretation of, of, of dreams through the biblical word, because the Bible is, is the, it's the framework of how everything is framed. It's the compass. Yeah. It's the compass. And when you, when you apply that to the direction of the dream, it, it, and I love, I never get tired of interpreting dreams because they're all different and I can feel the father's, you know, cause I have a gift of interpretation. Hmm. I did nothing to earn it. It just, it just comes out of me. I inter I understand dreams more than I understand us talking like natural language. It's another language. And I just happen to get it like Joseph or Daniel. Amen. And so, you know, I, I, I think 
we have to learn that dreams are revelation and we have to learn the spirit to teach us. He says he'll teach us all these things. Yeah, and sure. so, yeah, I have, I hear oftentimes people say that I had, I'm, you know, I had a dream, but I had really bad pizza last night. And you know what I would say to them? Pizza's not that good. <laughs> pizza's not that good to give you the dream. Like I no. believe, like when we start looking and fixing our eyes on Jesus, um, oftentimes we think our dreams are, are circumstantial or they're just casual, but it's actually, it's God. Like when we turn our hearts and, you know, the Holy Spirit is there and yeah, sometimes he uses us to interpret, but, um, and sometimes he doesn't need a person to interpret. So yeah, I've never, I've never had a dream that I wasn't able to somewhat interpret what God was saying I mean, to a person. You, you see dreams all through the New Testament, yeah. Yeah. through the uh, Old Testament, New Testament, uh, uh, I mean, it shouldn't be strange to us that God can speak to us while we're sleeping. Mm -hmm. He's still there, right? Amen. I think sometimes he speaks to us while, while we're sleeping because our big mouths are shut there. <laughs> yeah, 100%. And we could actually hear something now. <laughs> you know, people, people ask, why tongues? Speaking in tongues, yeah. right? Yeah. They get all mad about that. Yeah. Well, that's the part of your body you can't control. So that's what, that's the part God goes for. He attacks your tongue right away mm. to get control of that tongue. Yeah. So it's not used of the devil. Yep. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'll share a little dream. Of, this was sort of like a blooper dream. This one coworker, right? He was uh, with me for many years and he said, Oh, brother Chuck, I had a, I had a dream the other night. I was driving your Jeep. I'm thinking, Oh no. He says, and, and as I was driving the Jeep, I went off a cliff and it went down and it blew up. What's the dream mean, Brother Chuck? You know what I told him? It means I'll never lend you my Jeep ever. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what it was about, though. It was about his ministry. It was going to crash the way he was running. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, he went over that edge and he crashed his entire ministry because he was a liar. And... Uh, Later on, I told him that. I said, this is what the dream means. If you don't watch yourself, you're going to crash and burn. You better watch your wow, attitude and the way you're saying things and the way you do things. He, he didn't. Mm -hmm. And he crashed and burned. Yeah. Isn't that interesting, Chuck, that, you know, I, I have, you know, when you have dreams of, of four-wheel drives, oftentimes it speaks of off-roading and forerunning. And, you know, when you, you know, obviously I know you, I know, you know, you're a pioneer, you're a forerunner. And, you know, when you look at, dreams that we have of people, that yeah. person usually is, you have to look to that person, who that person is. And it's, it's how, just look how, how important a dream can mean something that might seem circumstantial and something you would just dismiss, but something that is such a warning in God's goodness to keep you from going off the cliff. That's right. Know, that's you. right. Yeah. That's right. You know, sometimes it's uh, difficult to, to interpret certain dreams and this and that. And, Sometimes you sort of learn later what, what it was all about. Sure. I had a friend, he had a dream that he poked his, something through my eye. And and we were really good buddies. And, you know, it's we were just sort of, what in the world's that? Well, sure enough, later on, he sort of turned from me and poked me in my eye spiritually. Mm. And uh, later on, we got things right and square. But we didn't know what it meant. But I know what it meant later on because I felt it. It felt like someone poked me in my eye. Mm. But uh, anyways, yeah. Brother Tom, Amen. you got any uh, mission trips you're heading out on uh, in the next uh, few months or whatnot, or we could pray for you? Yeah, so we, we you know, since we got this mandate, you know, in China, it, it's uh, the majority of our emphasis is, is really on, uh, you know, America and grassroots and so we're, we're connecting with different types of kingdom communities, um, you know, all throughout the U.S., but we're going to be going to, uh, we're going to be in West Virginia uh, a couple of days from now with, uh, with Nathaniel uh, here in the studio with us, and I'm going to have some other people coming over there, and then uh, I'll be at, uh, in Tennessee, we'll be doing some, um, some meetings out there in uh, the Knoxville. 
And then the day that I get back, uh, we're flying to Australia for three weeks. Nice, nice. And so um, I'm very expectant. There's been a lot of of a lot of God's just intelligence, dreams, and over these seven years about what He wants to do to awaken. Um, you know, Australia is known as the Great Southland of the Holy Spirit, mm. and uh, we're really believing and contending. I believe this will be one of the greatest um, trips we've ever gone on to pioneer what He's asking to us to partner with for that nation. So we're very excited about what he's doing in Australia. Nice, man. Why don't you you just pray for for him as as we close the show up here, man. And we believe in what God is doing in our brother's life and his ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We just thank you, God, for the Ledbetter family, God, and the Kingdom Gravity Ministries, Lord, that they have going on in America and and all the things that they're doing around the world, God. We just put their ministry before you, God. Keep using them as a powerhouse, God, to just bring revelation to the body, God, to, to raise up the body so they can see who they are in Christ and they can go and and be the light of the world in the name of Jesus and I just pray for their trips coming up God your protection your divine appointments go before them father and as they go into Australia God we just put that church before you God put the body of Australia there before you Lord and your will be done there God that your Holy Spirit just impart through kingdom gravity ministries what you want to impart through them God into those people Lord Jesus so they can take it on and and see the revelation for the great commission God and for raising up disciples and we just thank you father for the relationships that you've given us the relationships that last a lifetime God even until we get to the kingdom of heaven we'll be able to see one another in in heaven and just be so joyful about what we've done on this earth together for the Lord and we're all smart a small part of a big thing and we just thank you God in the name of Jesus amen amen Hey, man, it's nice uh, having you all today. It's been great having Brother Tom. Uh, Hallelujah. You want to give the men of the dirt 300 bucks a month. That supports a whole family, a whole ministry. You can give 50, 100, whatever you feel. God bless you. Have a great day. Hey. Hey.